I'm David from Levica Photography and today we are unboxing the Godox AD200. There you go. So this thing is really pretty cool and um, let me see here. What it comes with is this head unit. There's a lever on the side, you pull it and it just comes right off. So anyway, it comes with a strobe head. Um, these heads have a cleaner light output. And then this particular unit came with a um, Bowen's uh, S-mount, um, kind of a flash head bracket. This you can use with pretty much any flash and then it'll allow you to use Bowen's modifiers. But anyway, the directions. Now the directions on here are actually pretty good. They're getting better. Um, Godox has been known to write some really bad stuff in the past, but this is very clean and simple. Nothing to it. Now it does come with this very fancy case. Now, let me show you what's in the case here. So in the case we've got these kind of foam brackets. This is just a uh, protector cover for that. And then it comes with the charger and then it comes with the alternate head and the battery of course sits in here. Now the battery is right here and this is kind of a heavy duty battery. The other thing this thing came with was a basic mount. Now, usually the build quality of Godox stuff has been iffy in the past. I mean, they're, they're built okay, you know, for the price. This thing is built a little better, but it comes with this bracket. This bracket looks like it should work fine, but here's the issue. So right here is our quarter 20 mount. We also have one here. This mount up here is to add on a uh, umbrella style mount for this that's got a hole in it similar to this thing here anyway the problem is this mount is fine this mount extrudes out of the body just a hair probably one thirty second of an inch this one doesn't so when you screw your adapter plate onto this thing what happens is you think you've got it on there really tight but then when you mount this on a flash stand, it just comes loose so easy. Because this metal piece that I'm unscrewing right here uh, gets, it touches the plastic before the brass. So it doesn't really hold it very well, but that's okay. So we have this mount and this is far more preferable. So the flash just kind of slides in here, not very well because this thing is like, so close to the size. The good news is it ain't falling out of here, but this is a very, very tight fit. So when you screw it down with this clamp, this thing is on here. So this bracket is a must, and I'll put a link to the light with this bracket as an additional uh, accessory because you really want this bracket. Because this thing it actually, the design of this bracket's fine, but it's just how these are mounted on here that doesn't really work very well. This is the Godox AD360. And you can see it takes the exact same style of bulb, and it has the same head protector. Now this mount, this quarter 20 mount, this light should have something similar to it. Unfortunately, that bracket does not fit on this side. But there are huge advantages to this light over this one. Now the guide number of this is 60, the guide number of this is 80, so it's not quite as bright. But the problem that I have with this light is actually this transmitter. The transmitter itself works great, but anytime you move this light around or you throw it in, the in your car or you throw it over your shoulder, a lot of times this can fall out very easy and I've lost two already. So it's kind of problematic that way. But the battery of this is double the power of this. This is 4,500 mAh, this one's 2,900 mAh. So, big difference. Now the thing that's interesting about this is it comes with this flash head that you can put on here. Now the head itself doesn't make it all that interesting. Um, here's the comparison between the two lights so you can actually see what the differences are in shape. Now here's the comparison between this one and the Godox V862. So you can see how the light actually covers.
So you can see that, you know, this one isn't quite as good as the other one, but the problem with this light on here is that we don't have a modeling light. With this head, this gives us the modeling light. All right, so I just wanted to show you the, the cycle time on this, and it's between uh, two and three bananas at full power. So one banana, two banana, three banana, one banana, two banana, three banana, one banana, two banana, three banana. See? Anyway, let me turn this down to half power, and then we're about a second apart. So, you know, really excellent recycle times. If I bring this down to a quarter, then it will fire continuously like a little machine gun, nice and fast. All right, so let's go over the back of this really quick. So basically, uh, when our wireless mode is on, then we have multi, and you can change uh, your hertz, and then your frequency, and your power. And from there, you can do multiple flashes. Uh, from here, we can go to TTL. It's minus three to plus three. And then if we hit mode again, this brings us into manual mode and we can set the power from 128 all the way to 1 to 1. Or you hold this down and brings up the wireless mode. And then from here, you can change your group just by hitting the group button, A, B, C, or D, or E. And then if you hold this down, then your channel button starts blinking and then you can go from 1 to 32. So in this case, we're just going to leave it on 1. Now right here, if you hold this down, this enables high speed sync. And if you just hit it once, then it enables your uh, modeling light. And with the flash head, unfortunately the flash head is the only thing that has the modeling light. This light head doesn't actually have any kind of modeling capability, so that's kind of a bummer. But still it seems to work pretty well. No, that's not, just not going to end well. <sighs> Okay. Anyway, by the hand, let's go ahead and walk around. So let me turn off the modeling light. Now on the side, you have your battery button right here. That pops the battery out. And right here, you have a cover. And this is for a traditional sink or USB connection. And your USB connection will also allow you to do firmware updates through that connection. And then this is the unlock for the head unit. Very light. Very nice. Let's take this out in the field and use it. I am shooting Jordan. I'm shooting her with the A7R. And we've got our light on uh, a power of 2 to 1. But we're, we have the light offset off of her, so it's kind of shooting past her. And she's getting a little bit of the feathered edge of the light. So right now we're just kind of licking her with light. We're just trying to throw just a little bit of light on her and my shutter speed right now is 2500 and we're shooting at f1.8 with the nifty 50 cheap ass lens all right now we're going to add to it since we're just throwing a little bit of light on her we're going to throw some light in the background. Uh, this is Slave B on channel 1. And I've got this zoomed in at 135, so it's going to act like a little bit of a hair light. Probably about right here. I forgot, you can actually pose. Well, so yeah, nice. Yeah, you popped a couple things. <laughs> Put this one behind her, and we're going to get some crazy silhouettes here. I'm going to silhouette your body, so I want some wide poses, and you're not going to really be able to see anything but the silhouette outline of your body. There we go.
uh, come forward now, just to the front of the mist. Not in the middle of it, but right, kind of right up here. Can you bring the, the little flash up here? All right. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that. That's fun. These turned out excellent. So that's all I'm going to torture you with for a night. Okay. That's it. it I think we got some really cool shit. Cool. Nice little peek. Yeah. Super dramatic. Just like me. I love this light. It's so good. I mean, it really is a fantastic light. And we'll get into all the modifiers that you can use with all these lights in a future video here really quick because there's a lot of good stuff out there. Uh, one thing that I did want to explain was we used this head unit for our photo shoot, but let me go in there and pop this thing off and put this one back on. The one thing that I did not explain yet which I should, is why does the flash head have a guide number of 52? Well, the Godox 862 uh, has a guide number of 60. You'd think that this would be the same. The problem is uh, this light is actually set at like 24 millimeter wide on full frame. Uh, that's just the way this is set up. There is no zoom function for this flash head. So that's just what it's at. Uh, because it's wider than normal, uh, when you measure the guide number, it's not going to throw a light out as far. On the, on the 862, you know, they're zooming all the way out when they actually test for that guide number. So that's why. This unit and this unit are pretty much about equal. It just depends on which light modifiers you want to use. Uh, but I prefer, you know, the actual strobe unit. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Otherwise, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.